Welcome to the power of array formulas. In this video, we got to talk about the brand new modern dynamic arrays. If you like what you see in this video, click that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified about new videos. There is a brand new way for Excel's calculation engine to calculate formulas. And guess what? It's only in Office 365. Now, right now, as of the middle of October, it's only in Office 365 Insider Edition. But within a few months, everyone who has Office 365 will have this absolutely amazing invention. Now, really, you have to think, Office 365, that gives us Power Query. It gives us Power Pivot as default. And now Dynamic Arrays, there's no reason if we want real power in Excel that we don't have Office 365. You are not going to believe what these new Dynamic Arrays or these modern arrays will do. Now we're going to see 21 amazing examples, but right off the bat, we're going to see how this old formula we used to use to get a sorted unique list in a single cell will be replaced with text join sort and the unique functions. Now, this is an extreme example of going from very complicated to simple with these new array functions. But that's not the only example we're going to see. The real power of the new Excel Calc Engine is that we no longer have to use Control-Shift-Enter to enter array formulas. As we'll see throughout the 23 amazing examples, there are many array formulas which we have used for years which will no longer require Control-Shift-Enter. And really, that's the amazing power of this new Excel Calc Engine and the way it handles all formulas. Now, I wrote the book Control-Shift-Enter Mastering Excel Array Formulas. And as both Bill, Mr. Excel Jellin, and Joe McDade at Microsoft joked, this book is going to have to be renamed to just Enter. Now, lots of the stuff in this book about array formulas is still valid. But we are going to have to learn some new things, like we don't ever have to worry about what keystroke to use, because now we just use Enter. And we'll also have to learn about spilling array formulas. Now, we all have to give a special shout out to Joe McDade at Microsoft. He was the lead in the main energy on the Excel team that created this new level of excellent Excel awesomeness. Now, what has changed in the new calculation engine? Well, the calculation engine in Excel treats all formulas the same. That means if the formula delivers a single answer, the formula would deliver the answer in a single cell. But if the formula delivers more than one answer, the formula will automatically deliver or spill all the answers either down to the right or in a rectangular range. Now, if something is already in a cell where the array formula tries to spill the answer, we'll get a spill error. Also, I skipped over number two. This is the best one. We don't ever have to use Control-Shift-Enter again. That definitely is a change for the better. Now, also, these modern arrays or dynamic arrays will automatically expand, contract. In other words, they're dynamic as the formula inputs change. Now we have seven new array functions, and we'll get to see those. We still have the eight existing array functions. We'll get to see some of these, including the amazing frequency and how much easier it is to use now that we have this new calculation engine. We'll also see that spilled arrays are not living in the spilled range. That will be a completely new concept. And we no longer have to house array calculations that we want to add in the sum product function. Oh my heavens, we can just use the sum function. Now, this is a common task where you make some big array calculation, and your goal is to add. So because we don't need Control-Shift-Enter anymore, we can just use the sum function. 
Now there's a few things that have not changed. The definition of an array formula, straight from my book, hasn't changed except for determining when you have to use Control-Shift-Enter. That's just out. A couple other things we're definitely going to have to remind ourselves or learn for the first time how array constants are constructed, because sometimes that'll determine how the array spills. And then, even though we have this new great calc engine, these functions still cannot handle array calculations. So even though over the years we would love to put in an array calculation in sum, ifs, count, ifs, average ifs, they still will not handle array calculations. And we'll actually see an example of that. Now let's go over and look at our examples. I'm going to go over to the sheet, no control shift enter. Now on this sheet, we want to start off with three examples that have nothing to do with the new array functions. But our typical array calculations we do where we're not going to be required to do control shift enter. We need to calculate an average. And guess what? We have an OR logical test. I don't want all these numbers in the average functions. I only want numbers where the sales rep is GG or the customer is Amazon. Well, the way we do that is with the IF function. We need to filter the numbers to match our logical test. So we use an OR logical test. We have to look at both columns and ask if they are equal to the condition or criteria. And because this is an OR logical test, we use the math operator plus. This logical test will give us trues and falses and will pick out the correct numbers. Now, this is an array calculation. And guess what? We have 1, 2, 3. And then the if function itself is a fourth array operation. And when I click at the end and hit F9, you can see we get exactly what we want, a filtered list of the numbers we need to put in the average function. Control-Z. So now I simply put that inside of the average. Now, before I hit Enter here, I'm going to jump over to a computer that does not have the correct calc engine. Now, I'm over here in an older version of Excel. And watch what happens when I simply hit Enter. It looks like I got an answer. But because I forgot to use Control-Shift-Enter, that number right there is incorrect because of implicit intersection. And if I were to enter the formula up here without Control-Shift-Enter, I get a value error. That meant in the earlier versions, in order to get our array formula to calculate correctly, we had to use the special keystroke Control-Shift and Enter. Then we had to look up to the formula bar and verify that the curly brackets were put in. Once we saw the curly brackets, we knew that our array formula was calculated correctly. But over here with the new calculation engine, when I enter this array formula just using Enter, I am never going to get an error from implicit intersection, and I'm never going to get that value error. And we never have to look up and worry about those curly brackets because we don't need them anymore. In fact, it's really Excel doesn't need them anymore because every time we hit Enter, our array formula or non-array formula will just calculate correctly. Now, this is an array formula that has internal array calculations and normally would need Control-Shift-Enter. But it's also an array formula that delivers a single answer. Now we want to look at another amazing thing about the new calculation engine. Now, frequency, that's a common calculation. We have some data. And we need to count how many of these sales numbers fit into these categories. Now, the frequency function is amazing because we simply give it the upper limits. It will automatically create these categories and deliver a count for each category. Now, this is how we used to have to do it. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to jump over to that other computer and show you how we used to do this. First, we have to select the range in advance. Then in the active cell, we type frequency. We enter the data, that's the data to count, comma. Then we enter our upper limits, close parentheses, Control-Shift-Enter. 
and we have to verify that our curly brackets are put in. But with the new Calc Engine, we don't have to do any of that. I simply select any cell I want equals frequency. Enter the data, comma, the upper limits, close parentheses. And guess what? When I hit Enter, because this is an array function that delivers many answers, when I hit Enter, it automatically spills the frequency counts down the correct number of rows. Now I want you to notice something. We have the second cell in the spilled array selected. If I look up to the formula bar, whoa, it's grayed out. If I click back in the original cell where we created it, hey, look at that. I can see the formula. The spilled array actually lives in cell F40. The rest of these formulas are not really sitting in the cells. So when you see grayed out formula, that means it's not really living there. Now, let's do a little experiment. Am I allowed to say equals? And even though the formula is not living there, can I click on that cell, F42? Oh, look at that. I can. But what happens if I click on this cell up here? I type an equal sign and click on F40 and hit Enter. Oh, it gives me a 2 also. But if I want to re-spill or refer to the actual spilled array, F2, I use the pound sign or hashtag. As soon as I do that, boom, I can Enter and re-spill it. If delete, if I simply highlight the range, it'll automatically put the cell where the formula lives, and then pound sign and Enter. Now I am going to delete this. Now the reason that this new Calc Engine in this example is such a game changer is because frequency is something that I teach all the time in statistics and analytics classes. And people have such a hard time remembering they have to highlight everything in advance and then use some special keystroke. But that's all gone. Simply create your frequency, it spills, and you're done. Now think about that. Just in these two examples, we no longer have to worry about implicit intersection error, value error, whether or not the curly brackets are in, and any array formulas that deliver multiple answers will automatically spill. All right, one more thing about spilled arrays. If we build our formula, data, comma, upper limits, close parentheses, I love this. I'm going to hit Enter, spill. That means there is something in the cells below blocking it. Now, in this case, we don't have any visual indication. But in one of the cells, look at that, is a space. So I'm going to backspace. And when I hit Enter, now it can spill. So whenever you see spill, it means there's something blocking. Now, one other example I just have to show you. This is something we do all the time in statistics and analytics. We have a frequency distribution with relative frequency. And we need to calculate the mean and the standard deviation. This is just a regular standard deviation. But I no longer have to remember to use Control-Shift-Enter. I just hit Enter, and it calculates correctly. Another amazing example on this next one on the sum sheet is one of my favorite. Our goal is to add for the sales rep team from this data set. This is what I don't want to do. That's too long. But watch this. We're going to see two amazing things about the new Calc Engine. I'm going to do some ifs. I'm going to select the sales range, Control Shift down arrow, F4, comma, and the criteria range. That's the sales rep column, Control Shift down arrow, F4, comma. And now we're going to do a function argument array operation. Because this is an OR logical test, I'm asking of every single sales rep, are you June or Sue or Poppy or Tyrone? I simply in criteria one put all four names. Now, why is this a function argument array operation? Because when I put multiple items in that argument right there, it instructs some ifs to deliver an answer for each one of the items. Now, take note. As we mentioned at the beginning of the video, some ifs, count ifs, average ifs, 
can't handle array operations. It's the sum range, criteria range, that can't handle array operations. But in criteria 1, this is a function argument array operation. It is definitely going to make some ifs deliver or spill multiple answers. Now remember, array formulas that deliver multiple items spill in the new Excel. First, I'm going to hit F9 just to prove that some ifs did deliver the correct total sales for each one of the sales rep, Control Z. But watch what happens when I hit Enter. It spills the answers. Now take note, this spilled. And it's not one of the new array functions or one of the old array functions. We have been able to make function argument array operations in hundreds of functions for years. It's just that now, if we don't house them in some aggregate function or some function that will deliver a single item, they're going to spill. So when I hit Enter, it absolutely spilled. Now, in our particular case, that's not what we want. So I'm going to come here in F2. Guess what? I need to add. I'm not using some product anymore. In the old days, and I used to teach this for years, that's what we'd have to do. But we no longer have to use some product. We're going to use the most logical function in Excel for adding, the sum function. And when I hit Enter, it does two things. It gives me the right answer. I didn't have to use Control-Shift-Enter. There's no curly brackets. And of course, because the formula now is delivering a single item, it's not going to spill. Now really, I want this up here. So I'm going to Control-C, Escape. Right here, I'm going to Control-V, Control-Enter, drag it to the side, last cell, F2. That formula and the new Calc Engine is so much easier than that formula right there. And I got to show you one other thing on the easy sheet. This is basically the same formula we just did. And the report is trying to get the sales team for each region. We just put a mixed cell reference here and a function argument array operation with a mixed cell reference for the range. We copy it down and over, and just like magic, we have our report. And guess what? This formula right here is a lot easier than if we were going to do it with pivot tables. This is one of the rare examples where the formula is actually easier than a pivot table. So with our modern dynamic arrays and no Control Shift Enter, this sort of report got even easier. All right, now let's go look at one of the new amazing functions on the unique sheet. Here we have some products. And I just want a unique list. Oh my heavens, this is what we used to have to do. This formula right here counted the number of unique items. And then that formula gave us a unique list. But no more. We can simply use the unique function. Now, in order to use unique, we have to think of a couple of things. We have to know the difference between unique list and distinct list. Unique list just means I'm going to take one of each, including if they're duplicates. Distinct, if there are duplicates, it doesn't touch it. So distinct will only return items when there's a single item. All right, so for the first argument, I'm simply going to highlight the column. That's array. And if we're only interested in a unique list from a column, we simply use that first argument, close parentheses. And when I hit Enter, it totally spills. And guess what? When we add new records down here, it will expand. It is a dynamic array formula. Now before we test it, let's go ahead and try distinct equals unique column. Now the second argument, comma, that's if you are actually taking items not from a column filled with rows, but from a row filled with columns. So even though it says compare by column, that's when you would highlight an entire row filled with columns. That's not what we have, comma. We skip over that argument. And this is the one that determines distinct, which is true, or unique list, which is false. Unique list is the default. 
Notice it says one or more times. That means the items can occur one or more times. If we only want to extract items that occur once, then we select true, close parentheses, and enter. Now let's test our dynamic arrays. I'm going to come down here and tab. Oops, we get zeros because the cell is empty. But no problem. If you don't mind the zeros, you simply enter your record. And here we have sunspot. When I hit Enter, the formulas totally update. Now, if we didn't want to see the zeros, I can use the same formula over here. But guess what? Instead of using unique alone, now I'm going to use another amazing dynamic array function, the filter function. In the array, I'm going to put my unique comma. Include what values? I'm going to paste unique again. And I'm going to say, please include values that are not equal to 0. Because remember, a formula that looks at an empty cell sees 0. That's the comparative operator for not. Now, we don't need to put anything for if empty. We'll see how to use that argument a few examples ahead. But that's our formula. Close parentheses and Enter. Now let's test it. Tab. And when I type MTA, I still have zeros here. But there's no 0 there. When I hit Enter, now they all have MTA. Now, if I wanted to count unique, I could simply use the count of function, which counts not empty cells. Control V, there's my unique. Close parentheses. That simple formula will work as long as there's not an empty cell. When I hit Enter, I get 5. If I hit Tab and have an empty cell, then I have to do something to this formula. Now, F2, I suppose I could come over here and simply use this, Control-C, and, and put that inside of count a, Control-V, close parentheses, and Enter. But let's see, I haven't timed all these functions. Now, I might try a different tactic here. And again, I haven't timed these. Count a unique. I'm simply going to subtract an OR logical test that asks, hey, look through this whole column. And this is an array calculation right here, because we have a whole column. Are any of you equal to 0? If any of them are, OR will report a single true. And then the math operator will convert it to 1. So I hit Enter, and that gives me a 5. Now, filter right here. I don't know. This might be my favorite new dynamic array function. And here's why. If we go over to the sheet Filter, I wrote a whole book about array formulas with a whole chapter, and in fact, multiple chapters about looking a particular item up in a column and returning multiple records. Now, this is the classic. We have one lookup value. We're trying to look up Gigi. But there are duplicates. And there's no single lookup function in Excel that can handle a lookup value and duplicates in the lookup column. So we have one lookup value. And we want to return multiple items, either a single column or multiple columns. Filter comes to the rescue equals filter. Now I'm going to just start off with the sales column for array, Control Shift down arrow, Control Backspace, comma. And then we put some logical test there. Highlight the column, Control Shift down arrow, Control Backspace. And I ask the question, are any of you equal to Gigi? We're not worried about empty cells. Close parentheses and Enter. Wait a second. F2. You got to be kidding me. We have to think of filter as a lookup function? You betcha. We've been looking for this solution for years. But let's change this. F2, instead of going from B to B, I'm going to go B to D. Now, filter will spill the records for Gigi for sales, product, and region. And of course, we're not limited to just one condition or criteria. If I scroll down here, I am not limited to a single condition here. I can use any of my Boolean multiplication for AND logical test and plus for an OR logical test. I can put anything I want in there. And when I hit Enter, calc, that's a new error. 
But that's because Gigi didn't sell any quads. Gigi definitely sold some sunshines. That is amazing. Now if we change it back to quad, the calc error, this is where we hit F2 and we use our third argument, if empty. Now think about this. What would we do with VLOOKUP? We'd have to put it in the if function or if error, if NA. But our lookup function for returning multiple items already has it built in. So I'm going to do comma and then in double quotes, so I'm going to type none with a little smiley face and enter. So now if I am trying to pull out certain records, there's Mo, sunshine. It gives me a happy smiley face. Hey, there's none. But Mo definitely sold some Aspen. That is absolutely amazing. The filter function, our new lookup function, to look up either with a single condition or multiple conditions and return multiple items. We can have whatever logical test, or we can simply have a single test. Filter. Definitely, so far, my favorite new dynamic array function. Now we've got to go look at sort, because we can improve this right here. Over here, I want to look up and return the records for Tyrone. There's Tyrone. So there's four of them, but I want it sorted. Again, this is one of these common questions that come up in forms. I need to somehow extract dynamically, using a formula, multiple records given a single lookup value, but then I want to sort it. Wow, watch this. F2, that's the cell that has the formula, so I simply put sort. Now, the filter will be our array, comma, the sort index. Get this, just like we have column index number in VLOOKUP to tell us which column in the sort function, we use sort index to say which column to sort by. So since we have one, two, three columns, we have to put a one, two, or three there. Since I want to sort by the first column, I'm going to put a one there, one, comma. The sort order, I get to decide. And look at this, one and minus one. I want minus one. I want descending. Now, by column, we could sort by a row filled with columns, but that's not what we have. The default is sort by row, so backspace, close parentheses, and enter. That is so amazing. Such a simple formula to replace really crazy difficult array formulas. Now there's also sort by. I'm not going to look at that one. That allows you to sort by multiple columns. Now let's go look at a few more array formula possibility. Here's one of the craziest formulas ever. If we're going to have mixed data, numbers, text, things like that, and we want to sort and extract a unique list, well, first we have to do our formula to count unique, and then we have to do this. You have to know how to do matrix algebra and all sorts of crazy stuff. Actually, I still remember when I learned this formula from Dominique at the Mr. Excel message board. But now what do we do? I'm just going to type it out. Sort unique, close parentheses, close parentheses, and Enter. It did exactly the same thing as one of the craziest formulas ever. OK, that formula was crazy enough. But what if you wanted to do the same thing in a single cell, F2? Now that formula is way more crazy than trying to do this and have it go into multiple cells. This formula, of course, comes from Bill Sizzes. And how easy is it now? Well, we take the same formula we just did, except for instead of allowing it to spill, which means the calc engine knows that the formula delivers multiple items, F2, we're going to wrap it in text join. It wants the delimiter, double quotes, comma, double quotes, comma. We want the default, ignore empty cells, comma, close parentheses, and Enter. Now I'm going to hit F2. It looks like I forgot a space. That is totally amazing. All right, we still have many amazing topics. And next, we want to go to the sheet spill direction. 
Now we need to talk about array syntax for array constants. There's some notes right there. It's pretty straightforward. Occasionally, we might want to hard code in a sequence of numbers. Well, if we do, we have to know that in curly brackets, we put whatever the numbers are, or for that matter, whatever items there are. But comma means go across the columns, and semicolon means go down the rows. So we could do a formula like this. And because it's comma, column, when I hit Enter, it spills picking out the six largest values across the columns. If we change this to semicolons, it'll spill down across the rows. We could even mix it up. That means go over a column, and then go down a row. Over a column, down a row, over a column. That will return a rectangular range. Now, we might not want to hard code it in, so we could put the number of items we want to extract from this data set over here in a cell. This is how we used to do it. We had to indirectly generate an array of 1 to 5s. But we don't have to do that anymore. We can use large, comma. And guess what? In the K, we're going to use yet another new array function called sequence. Now it has rows and columns. I'm going to select five rows. Just like up here, we had rows and columns. Here, we just put the numbers in, and it will spread it appropriately. The start, that's if you have a different start number than 1. And the step, 1, 5, 9, that would be a step of 4. But for our formula, that's all we need. And here's how amazing it is. I changed this to 2, and it is totally dynamic. 5, and Enter. Let's go look at a couple more examples for sequence, because there's some great examples. Well, if we ever just want numbers for rows, I just put how many? 12, and Enter. That's what we used to have to do. If I want a start and step value, 12 rows, no columns. The start is 1, and the step is 4. Close parentheses. Look at how easy that is, and Enter. That is much harder than this. Here's one that we've been doing for years. How do we extract all of the letters into the cells? Well, of course, we use the mid function. There's the text, comma, the start number. This is where we put, in the old days, some array constant or that row indirect. But now we put sequence. I only want one row, comma. I don't know how many columns, so I use the length function. It's going to count how many characters there are. Close parentheses. We don't need start or step. Close parentheses. And of course, F9, that gives me my dynamic array of sequential numbers. Now notice these are comma, so it's going to go across the columns, Control-Z. But now we need to comma and extract each one of those sequence numbers with exactly one character. Close parentheses and Enter. If we wanted to go down, we'd simply put transpose. And there we go. Rad, cool, and fun. Yes, indeed, the new calc engine and the new array functions certainly are. Now let's go over to dynamic pivot table. I've already started by creating a unique list of row headers, just like a pivot table. Up here, I did the same thing, but I wanted it to spill to the side, so I used transpose. And that looks like column and row headers for a pivot table. Now, what are we going to do? We want to sum the revenue. So I'm going to use the sum ifs function. The sum range, there it is, comma. Criteria range 1, sales rep, comma. And I want to do a function argument array operation. So when I put all of those values in, look at that. F7 is where the formula lives. And pound means give me that whole array. If I were to click that in F9, sure enough, it is doing exactly that. Control Z, comma, criteria range 2, that is product, comma. And there's my second function argument array operation. 
That means that this sum ifs, if I hit F9, delivers many answers. Control Z. Remember, this is going to spill. So I hit Enter, and there we go. Later, when I want to add new data, Control C, I paste it below my table, and the pivot table expands without hitting refresh. That's pretty amazing. All right, we're going to scroll over. We got to talk about single. Single is a new function that most of us are never going to use. But we do have to know about it for two reasons. Now, before I can describe what single does, I got to jump over to my old computer and show you implicit intersection. Now, implicit intersection is when we used a formula and we pointed at a range of cells. Now I'm going to hit the F4 because we're going to copy this. But this is the old calc engine. So when I enter it, it will not spill. It'll actually see the value in each row. So when I enter this and copy this down, we can clearly see that because it's next to the actual range, it's seeing what's in the row. But down below, we see a value error. This is why in the old system, when we didn't use Control-Shift-Enter, we saw a value error if it wasn't next to the data set. But if it was next to the data set, we would see some answer, almost always the wrong answer. Now I'm back in Excel with the correct calc engine. And in the old engine and the new engine, nobody uses implicit intersection. And of course, if we do this now, when I hit Enter, it spills. What is single? If for some strange reason, and I'm going to hit the F4 key, you actually wanted to use this, it would force this array to not spill. And of course, as we copied it down, it would do implicit intersection, just like in the old version, including the value error. Now, the only reason that we need to worry about this is not that we're ever going to do implicit intersection. But if you have merged and center, and you refer to a merged range with a formula, then the formula looks like this. It has a range of cells. And I recently had some accounting templates sent to me. And the templates were filled with merge and center. And there were formulas pointing to the merge and center. So if this happens to you, well, this is what you'll see. If you use merge and center, with a formula pointing towards the merge and center. From now on, when you open that workbook, there'll be this mysterious single there. All right, two more points about these new array formulas and this new calc engine. As I mentioned at the beginning, we would love it if the old functions, average ifs, count ifs, sum ifs, could handle array operations. But the new calc engine doesn't override how these functions are programmed. When I hit Enter, it doesn't even give us a good message like, you're not allowed to do an array formula. It just gives us this terrible message here. So that problem is still not solved. The last new function is called rand array. And if you wanted, like the old rand function, a number between 0 and 1 up to 15 digits, but you wanted 10 rows and 2 columns, that's how you do it. You hit Enter, and it spills. Now, the way that this will be important is in simulations. Sometimes we have to simulate 100 or 1,000 or 10,000 or 50,000 rows randomly. And so that's where this comes in. If I highlight RAND 100 and F9, it gives me 100 random numbers. Now, the way we use formulas like that is in simulation. And this is one from the class I teach on simulation. All right, that was an epic video with actually what turned out to be 31 amazing array formula tricks. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun, including lots more array formula videos over the coming years. All right, we'll see you next video. Thank you.